Frédéric Chopin was a brilliant Polish composer and pianist who wrote some of the most unforgettable music for piano. Today, 170 years after his death, his genius lives on in his pieces that give comfort, joy and pleasure to everyone who hears them. Frédéric Chopin was born in Zelazowa Wola on March 1, 1810, in what was the Duchy of Warsaw. His father, Nicholas, was French and worked as a tutor to the children of the aristocratic Scarbeck family. There he met Justina, Chopin's mother, who was a distant cousin of the Scarbecks and employed by them as housekeeper and nanny. When Frederick was still a tiny baby, his father got a job as a French teacher in a prestigious school in Warsaw, so they packed up their things and moved to the city. With two musical parents, his mother played piano and his father flute and violin, it wasn't surprising that little Frederick took to music. By six years old, it was clear to his teacher that Frederick was a piano prodigy who could go far. This boy is a genius! So at 13, when he started school, he began studying piano composition and music theory and practicing like mad. As a young man, he gave performances for the Polish nobility and the arty intellectual crowd in Warsaw and even played for the Russian Tsar Alexander I. Word spread fast of this talented pianist and composer and soon doors were opening across Europe. Everyone wanted to see this musical genius. So, at just 20, he set off for Paris, the centre of creativity and art. Paris in the 1830s was full of famous writers like Victor Hugo, painters like Eugène Delacroix and musicians like Berlioz and Schumann. But Chopin was unknown when he arrived. How could he market himself? In February 1832, he gave a recital at the showroom of Playel, his favourite piano brand, to an audience that included the mighty pianist Franz Liszt, who was very impressed with what he saw. What did Chopin do for money? Lots of people wanted to buy the piano music he wrote. And on top of that, he taught piano to rich students from all over Europe. Chopin never liked to discuss money, so his students would leave the cash on the mantelpiece after their lessons, rather than handing it over to him. With this good income, he didn't need to perform in public, which he hated anyway. Instead, he could do what he liked best, play to small groups of friends in his apartment and concentrate on composing. So what about his love life? At 26, he met the French author Georges Sand at a party. She was six years older, short, liked to dress like a man and smoke big fat cigars. This was pretty daring as women needed a permit at that time to wear men's clothes and a woman smoking in public, well, that is scandalous. Chopin first said about her, what an unattractive person she is. Is she really a woman? But they both felt the attraction and it wasn't long before they fell in love. Chopin had always been sickly and often ill and his health had started to bother him. So he and Georges, everyone knew her as Aurore, went to the sunny island of Mallorca to spend the winter in 1838. Chopin had a piano sent over from Paris and George wrote her books and Frederick worked on his compositions. Sadly, Chopin's health didn't improve and within a few years he was seriously unwell most of the time. He composed less and less, he lost most of his pupils, then he broke up with George and despite a trip to England to perform, he couldn't get back on his feet again. He died of tuberculosis with his sister at his bedside in Paris. He was only 39. 3,000 people came to his funeral, although many more wanted to come, and Mozart's Requiem was sung in the Church of the Madeleine. Later, at his graveside, his own composition, the funeral march from Sonata No. 2, was played as his coffin was lowered into the ground. Despite all his years in France, he always thought of himself as Polish. Before he died, he had made one request. 
that his heart be removed from his body and taken back to his beloved Poland to be buried there. In Chopin, music found a pianist and composer with rare gifts, his unique sense of melody and his ability to express heartfelt emotions with such purity and tenderness means that he lives on through his music and will never be forgotten. Thank you, Frederick Chopin. Oh!